Uh, I welcome you to this uh, brief discussion. I want to, I want us to have uh, regarding the F test. Um, put in very different terms, or maybe in very simple terms rather than different terms. What we are interested in doing when we are carrying out this F test is we want to test how good our model is as an explanation. And the usual way we approach this is to say ratio of what the model explained this is measured measured by ESS or the R squared this divided by ratio of what the model failed to explain which is measured by RSS or 1 minus R squared. Okay, and so these are two approaches to saying the same thing. Let me try to find a way of having the division sign. I'll put that. So this is what we are trying to do. <clears throat> but what we know is that the model we used to explain the variation in earnings, where our dependent variable is earnings here, only had one explanatory variable. So if we think in terms of the degrees of freedom, and these degrees of freedom are k minus 1, where k is the number of estimated coefficients. We estimated the coefficient of the intercept term and coefficient of education. So this is an intercept, this is a slope coefficient. Now, in terms of making an explanation of the variation of earnings, the intercept does not contribute to the explanation. The explanation is being done by education. So, the degrees of freedom, therefore, are two estimated coefficients less the constant. We take it out, and the answer we get, I will... Okay, so that's equal to 2 minus 1, okay? And the answer I get is 1. Uh, this thing is misbehaving. I want a number there. And no decimal places. So we have 1 degree of freedom for the model. This is what you see here. They are saying... We estimated two coefficients, but the one, one of them was the constant, so we take it out. If you think of your model in deviation form, it is actually B1, the slope coefficient, X plus the error term, um, plus um, the error term, where this Y is where your small y is equal to your big y minus your y bar and your x, small x, is equal to your big x minus x bar, okay? So if we were to square both sides, we end up having y squared is equal to um, beta 1 x squared plus error squared now plus 
the cross product of beta 1 x and the error but by the assumptions of classical linear regression modeling that cross product when summed is equal to zero because we know that the covariance between x and the disturbance term is zero so we actually left with these things these uh, these squares now if we sum them but if we sum the left hand side and we sum um, all terms to the right, the right hand side, then what you get is to the left it will be total sum of squares. Notice I'm saying sum, which means we have done the summing, and to the right it will be equal to ESS plus where uh, that's the problem of working in Excel because now it wants to read everything as a formula where now this term here B1x squared is your explained sum of squares, uh, sum of squares. this is what the model is offering in terms of explaining the variations we observe in our earnings and error squared is your residual sum of squares okay so this is what the model failed to explain what the model explained the totality of what should have been explained now if you divide everything by tss just to, to help you see something important here, um, <coughs> ESS and TSS, RSS and TSS. If we do this, If you do this, you will notice that this over that is 1. Okay, so we end up having a 1 here is equal to, and your ESS over TSS is your R squared. I hope you remember this. Your ESS over TSS is your R squared. Now, what we call ESS is the regression sum of squares. R, this R here is your explained, that is what the regression explained, and the SS there means sum of squares. So the ratio of this number here over this number here gives us that number there. Okay? Now, <clears throat> and what the model fails to explain is the residual sum of squares here over the total sum of squares which can easily be written so now let's write this this is our r squared and this is plus rss over tss okay so if i want to know what rss over tss is rss over tss equal to from this particular relationship I have here, I have to take R squared to the other side so that I remain with this only. So that's one minus R squared. This is what I have here. So what the model failed to explain is one minus R squared. What it explained is R squared, okay? Or it's also called ESS, or it's called the RSS. Now, once you have understood this, then the test itself is much easier to carry out. The now hypothesis claims that the slope coefficient is equal to zero. The alternative claims that the slope coefficient is not equal to zero then we have of course to find 
the critical values which I have indicated as F crit there. Your F crit has got numerator degrees of freedom. This numerator has some degrees of freedom here, which are K minus 1. And the denominator there has degrees of freedom. It is the sample size minus the number of coefficients we estimated, which is K. So in this case, it will be equal to, I'm using a sample of 200 here, less 2, and that will be 198. Okay, you can see the 198 there. Okay, so now <clears throat> what is happening here is our F observation, our F, um, I mean our F distribution Yes, the following parameters that are very important for finding the critical value that we will use to execute the test. So it is numerator degrees of freedom, which are k minus 1, that one we have there. This numerator is associated with that degrees of freedom. And denominator degrees of freedom, the denominator here, which is what we failed to explain, is n minus k degrees of freedom and then the level of test here let's say we're carrying it at some level alpha percent and so we have our alpha here then we close now this of course entering the values we have done we see the numerator degrees of freedom is one um, the denominator degrees of freedom is 198 and let's say we are doing this at 5% so our alpha is 0 0.05 you close this should give you some answer from the table now your F table is like this let me just explain it a little bit it's a very very long table you should be able to interpret it now, I, I recall someone asked me in class, why do we say it only has one critical region? Um, and I did mention that we didn't want to uh, now bring complications into uh, the, the lecture. But the simplest answer I can give you is that if you look at this test here, it is a right hand test. It is not centered around zero. So there are no negatives here. So it can be even another tail. Remember that the essence of us having two tails um, in the T and the normal distribution is because the test here, yeah, the distributions are centered around zero. And so to the right, you have positive values. To the, to the left of the line of symmetry, which is zero, you have negative values. So here, this is not a symmetrical distribution. So it starts from zero onwards. It's a right end test. It only has positive critical values, if, if we can say it that way. So now what you will see is that it has the numerator degrees of freedom which from what we were doing relates to what the model managed to explain and it is denominator degrees of freedom which you read in this direction these relate to what the model failed to explain then the pr here is the p value so this these p values are reported um, for up to about 1%, there's something missing in the first row there. So this is 25%, this is 10%, this is 5%, this is 1%. Now we are carrying our test at 5% level of significance here. And we have one numerator degree of freedom and 198 denominator degrees of freedom. So we are under this column where we have one numerator degrees of freedom. We want to look for 98 here. So these numbers, we find them here. Sometimes they are labeled there. You keep scrolling until you get there. Right? Now you see they are this side. 
because it's a continuous table now they are this side now they are that side now they are this side now we we reach i think this is the end of the table we actually don't see 198 but 198 is for all practical purposes equal to 200 so we are here and we want this is the pr column and this is the column for one numerator degree of freedom so we want this number here that's what we are looking for we are looking for 3.89 so we come here 3.89 that's the critical value okay in terms of this it is about 3.89 that's the critical value you see that then the next thing is to state our decision rule the decision rule is if our f observed is greater than our f critical reject your h naught remember your h naught said the slope coefficient is zero that is it is claiming that education does not explain anything at all if this doesn't hold then you should fail to reject that is what we have stated here if we find the opposite that is where your f ops is smaller than the critical value then we should fail to reject the now so now we calculate our f ops which is equal to now using the information we have here you can use the ess which is that and the rss which is that or you can use the r squared which is that and 1 minus r squared there and adjust with these numbers you get the same answer so this is equal to let's try to do it now this is equal to your r squared maybe let me just write the formula someone might be confused here your r squared divided by k minus 1 right close that over 1 minus r squared divided by n minus k and I close okay so the corner bracket over the division sign is what we are saying numerator degrees of freedom and numerator this is the the explained sum of squares or what the model managed to explain and then we adjust that for its degrees of freedom and what it failed to explain adjusted for its degrees of freedom now once you have done that you can now say this is equal to my r squared which is that divided by my degrees of freedom which is that over my 1 minus r squared which is that over um, my n minus k which is that I close this close that say ok ok I get this number here is my f observed you see this is the f observed you have calculated by excel okay so using the r squared approach i got the same f observed as that now the next thing or maybe before i do the next thing let me show you an alternative method or an alternative method is to say this is equal to your ESS over K minus 1 everything over your RSS over N minus K 
you see um, what the model explained adjusted for degrees of freedom over what the model failed to explain adjusted for degrees of freedom now if uh -oh, it read this thing as a formula okay so that's the alternative formula equal to what the model managed to explain which is the ESS is this number here and we are dividing that by the numerator degrees of freedom and that over what the model failed to explain the RSS which is that divided by the denominator degrees of freedom which is that you close say okay you see that you get the same F okay so these are alternative approaches this is called the sum of squares approach this is called the R squared approach and you can have an alternative one in the context of a bivariate regression that is a, a regression with the dependent and only one explanatory variable there is a relationship between the t statistic you get here and the f okay so your f observed here is equal to your t squared and this means if i come here and i say equal to my t is that i square it there you go i get the same answer okay so let me reduce the number of decimal places um why did something move like that right so this is the t let me call it the shortcut it only works when you have a bivariate regression so now imagine you are in the exam I give you a regression where the F is not reported but I have given you the regression and I have given you the T values and I ask you is the model significant overall that is I want you to test the overall significance of the model in a bivariate context you know that your f statistic is your t squared if you square this number you get the f then this is your f observed you would have obtained your f critical from the tables now our decision here said if our f observed is greater than our f uh, critical we must reject h naught so our f critical is 3.89 and here we got our f observed far to the right which is 34.05 it's a very big number relative to the critical value so we are deep into the shaded region so therefore our conclusion is since f orbs since f orbs is greater than f crit reject H naught at the five percent level of significance and conclude that the model is significant. Okay, that is the model is a good explanation. Essentially that would be the process of carrying out your F test what is important is to understand the relationships depending on what you are given in the question you should know which formula to use do i use the r squared approach do i use the ess approach do i use a, do I use a t approach in each case you arrive at the same answer of course this t shortcut is only used in a bivariate regression context Mm, I will stop here. I hope this is helpful to you.